Hello, everyone. Welcome. We have a great episode for you today. We are joined by Justin from iPoppy. They are an award-winning concentrate company in California. They just took home a couple of awards at the Emerald Cup just last week or two weeks ago. And they also took home some awards at the uh, California State Fair. I also have a guest host today. I'll just call it out. Uh, Dad's at home with the baby today. So uh, if we have uh, our little co-host um, jump in and say stuff, apologies. But um, I'm really excited about this show. Justin is friends with our friends over at Huckleberry Hill Farms, um, who we've had on the show. We've had Johnny on the show like two or three times, I think. Um, a longtime friend of ours for the last few years. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. Welcome, Justin. Thank you so much. It's it's an absolute honor to be on the show with you guys. Thanks for taking the time. You have an adorable baby there. Yeah, yeah. I Super know. Huh? Yeah, I'm trying to brush up on my baby talk. So if there's any <laughs> questions, this way, help me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, so the way we like to kick off our shows is we like to get a kind of a little bit of background on you and especially your connection to cannabis. Um, so I'd love to hear, yeah, how how did you kind of fall in love with the plant, so to speak? What's your connection to cannabis that kind of led you on this path? Uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, so my my background actually stems from entertainment. Uh, the, I've wor been working in the entertainment industry in front of camera as an actor um, since I was 13 years old, and then I found my passion on the other side of camera, producing. And I only say that because I feel like the way I operate any type of business or anything I do is very much in a production production sense. Hence, iPoppy is very much a collaborative brand, very similar to how like independent films make a movie. You don't have the studio budget. So it really takes like the talent of a lot of great people coming in to collaborate on a similar belief. And um, so when I was 13, um, that's basically when I first experienced cannabis. Obviously, it's a pretty young age, um, but um you know, there was quite a bit of stigma around it growing up. You know, we grew up around the dare days. So I remember always asking like 21 different questions just before we even started to smoke and like, just try it, dude. I was like, is it going to make me go crazy? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? And um, once I tried it, it was like nothing that anyone said it was going to be like, like so many misconceptions immediately made sense. And it kind of adjusted the way that I looked at life in general, where I stopped being so naive and believing everything with full confidence and started questioning things more and trying to keep a more open mind. And it was kind of like an aha moment for me. I was like, well, fuck if, excuse my French, that's not good for me. No, go talk. ahead. Still uh, <laughs> but uh, basically it was, um, you know, I was like, well, if they were completely wrong about this, then what else are we wrong about? Um, so it really helped me to to have a more open mind. I think it made me a lot more social and personable. I think it helped my craft and acting. But the unfortunate thing is, um, as a child actor, and during that time in the early 2000s, cannabis was still really looked at poorly. And, um, you know, it was one thing to smoke cannabis in the industry, but it was another thing to be like under 18, um, auditioning for things on like Nickelodeon and Disney and like, you really had to be careful that you weren't going to get blacklisted for anything like that. So I always felt like uh, I was like, oh, I can't really be myself, which and like when people look at it now, they're probably like surprised because like most of entertainment is pretty welcoming of cannabis now. But that wasn't very common until recently. I'd say like that pivot and change really maybe happened up at like 2016, 2018. And then once legalization hit, that really changed the way that we look at things. Um, and so I kind of had to really hide that. Um, eventually, I got into competing in mixed martial arts. And that's when I found a lot more beneficial use for the plant, not just for recreational purposes, but really looking at the plant as medicine. Uh, I dealt with quite a bit of injuries at that time. And you know, I would go to doctors and the first thing that they would do is try to prescribe me painkillers or try to prescribe me some type of muscle relaxant, a, a flex roll of some kind, something. And, and here I am at like 17 years old and they just gave me an 
unlimited refillable prescription of Norco's. Um, and that can go real bad real quickly. Uh, and so like what I found is like another, it was like one of those other aha moments, you know, you have this doctor and there's a lot of benefits to Western medicine. I want to say that, but, um, I think sometimes we put doctors on a pedestal and, and, you know, we, we forget that they're just people as well. And, um, they're trying to do their best, but sometimes the system can make that a challenge. And I, I don't think the doctor was trying to get me addicted to like opioids or anything like that, but I don't think he had any other alternative option to really provide me at the time. And so, um, I quickly found that these painkillers were not good for me. They were not uh, helping me. They were exacerbating the issue, making things a lot worse. Um, eventually I started running into a lot of concussion issues, um, the repetitive hits to the head. And, and that's where I also found cannabis to be extremely helpful. So I stepped away from all of those pharmaceutical medications and I started taking a more holistic approach to how I'm going to recover from this. So first and foremost, I took some time away from training and not getting hit in the head, which is probably an important thing to do. Um, and then the second thing was like really looking at different types of um, cannabis therapeutics that would help. So I experimented with isolates and then I found that full spectrum like CBD, THC and different minor cannabinoid compounds blended together were actually working much more beneficially for me. Um, and then I also found that I think a lot of us look at hash and rosin as a recreational um, product. It's, you know, you look at all these heady stoners and whatnot, but I actually found for athletes in particular um, that that rosin just really, really helps therapeutically on on just like the recovery of your body, the inflammation, the being able to relax and um, I just found that way more beneficial. And, you know, as I, the years went by and more and more time went away from those injuries, I found myself getting back to baseline, um, you know, going back to how life was before all these injuries happened. And, you know, that's where I found like my passion in cannabis. And I was like, well, I, I love what I'm doing here in the industry. Um, this was just before legalization. I had a production company. Um, but once legalization happened, I, I had a mutual friend that was working on the wellness side of things with tinctures and Ayurvedic compounds that were Ayurvedic recipes blended with CBD and THC and other cannabinoids um, because we found it was really these terpene profiles and flavonoids, you know, the same things that are found in like lavender or, or turmeric. Um, and, and we found that when you actually blended these things together, they created a, a similar entourage effect. Go figure, plants and plants. Um, and so I, I really fell in love with their product. Um, and so I just decided just to help them on the marketing side of things. Um, uh, eventually, I helped them on like the creative director side of things. And I started getting my foot more into the legal industry side of cannabis. And so, you know, for a long time, I had to stow away my passion for cannabis. I would say I was. I, I used to make those trips up to Humboldt, like when I was 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, buy like five, 10 packs at a time, come down and, and really pride myself on trying to supply the best sun-grown medicine down here because everything was just saturated with indoor. Um, but, you know, as my career was taking off on the production side, it just became too risky. So I had to put that aside. Um, and then eventually the way I poppy kind of started is I was like, buying way too much hash and rosin on the rec side and just we just know how expensive that can get and um i was spending so much money my cpa just kind of yelled at me and it was like one of those things where i'm like that's kind of weird like i'm paying you and you're yelling at me and he's like dude this this does not look good if you're spending this much money <laughs> and then he kind of just threw it out there like you know you should just like at this rate, you should just start your own company. Even if you break even, just like how much you're spending monthly, just put it into the company. And and uh, that's that's kind of like uh, the funny story of how this started was trying to get cheaper medicine. And then um, it became something so much bigger, meeting Johnny and Rose at Huckleberry Hill Farms. That's that's really a, an amazing journey. Um, I uh, also, I'm a below the knee amputee, and I also have been just over the years trying to figure out things to kind of deal with the therapy of that. And I fell across this um, Dit the Jow, and I learned about it from the martial arts community. 
Um, and they use it for vascular and bruising and that type of anti-inflammatory healing. And I applied that with the cannabis oil uh, that I extracted and then put in my own CBD isolate. And I have found that to be the most therapeutic uh, thing that I've ever come across as far as for any kind of pain rub. So yeah, that it's, I'm so happy to hear that. I always love hearing um, like everyone's story and experiences and successes. You know, so much of this is anecdotal right now. But I think we're finding as the science and technology is, is growing, we're able to prove what you're saying from your personal experience and, and what I've experienced as well. So now that you um, kind of started making your own extracts, so how did you get involved in kind of making those first batches of extracts and what were they? Uh, so, whoops. Can you guys see me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so originally, um, I'll have to take it back a little bit. I went into the Gan GA program and I say that because the Gan GA program really helped me to solidify connections with great farmers. Um, the, I have the Gan GA program to thank for meeting Johnny and Rose. When you uh, go to do your two day training on the campus in Humboldt, it's beautiful over there. You actually get the opportunity to go visit um, one of the few farms that they work with. And it's random, so you don't know which farm you're going to visit. And um, a year before I went to go do my training, I tried the white thorn rose. And immediately I had the same experience a lot of people have where they're like, this is different. This is special. This is magical. This is unique. What is this? And it just really impacted my life and just like took over. It just made me feel so grateful. Like I, I loved the experience of it. And I was just like this is a disruptor in the, in the industry. This can make people that aren't used to cannabis or are afraid of cannabis understand it in a such better sensory profile lens. And so, you know, I kind of just threw it out there. I was like, man, I don't know who the farmers are, but I want to look up who they are. I want to meet them one day and just shake their hand and say, thank you so much for the white thorn rose. I found out it was Huckleberry Hill Farms. I'm like, okay, great. They're in Humboldt. I don't know where, but maybe one day I'll run into them. And so I go do my two day live training and it just so happens that the farm that we're going to visit on the second day was Huckleberry Hill Farms. And I was like, wait, wait, wait the Huckleberry Hill Farms that, that makes the white thorn rose that bred the white thorn rose. And they're like, yeah, the Huckleberry Hill Farms. So I'm trying not to freak out and, and be a fanboy, um, which is interesting because I've worked in entertainment with a lot of different celebrities and I don't get like that. But like when I see Johnny or I see like MMA fighters, I like start to fan out. <laughs> and so I, I saw Johnny and I saw Rose and I was like, I just have to thank you guys so much for, for creating the white thorn Rose and just what a positive impact it's had on my life. And um, I would love nothing more to support and, and do whatever we can to help keep this thing going. Um, Rose also noticed that I had an eye poppy shirt on because we just had a launch, a pre-launch party just to tell people like, Hey, we're going to come onto the scene. Um, and that was a month before I went and she had seen it on Instagram. So it was one of those like happenstance things. And uh, she recognized it and, and Johnny and I hit it off. And he was just like, well, I don't have an exclusive. I've got 50 pounds right now if you want it and threw his hand out and, and I shook it and we went on it and, and it ended up being more than 50. I want to say like a little over 100 pounds of fresh frozen. And this really set the foundation of what we were going to stand for as a brand, which is create products that inspire and grow community, build community, but also making sure that how we stand out compared to any other product out there as a craft brand versus commercial is telling the farmer's story, understanding that the farmer is why White Thorn Rose is so special. I'm not going to give away Johnny's story, um, but you know when you hear that, it makes all the sense in the world why this plant is special, why the white thorn rose is as magical as she is. And it's that courage, it's that sacrifice. It is what legacy cannabis craft farmers are all about. And, you know, it was very clear that they are the story. And our job as the brand is just to tell their story. So the product SKUs that we come out with, the rosin we come out with, this is an opportunity. This is a tool that we use to help tell that story. And it's a gateway for people to um, be a part of it and be a part of that community. And so I, I think that's what we've done really well. We call ourselves Fino Hunters and Storytellers. 
Um, and, you know, I operate this very much like I operate a production company. I'm not the extractor. I'm not the hash maker. I, I, I'm a connoisseur. You know, I, I love craft quality cannabis. And, um, you know, we decided that because of that part of the transparency of what we're working with and making sure that you're consuming clean cannabis is, is important. We decided we're only going to work with sun grown regenerative farms. Um, and we also decided we're not going to create a tier system and we can't compete with these commercial brands. If we compete, if we make a tier system and, uh, it just doesn't make sense to do that. So we decided in our R and D phase, we're only going to release what we feel is a tier one and our tier two and tier three. Uh, we can white label that out to, to other brands and make sure they find a good home out there. Um, but you know, I, I think going back to running this as a production. I started this company with three thousand dollars, no investment, just like my first monthly budget spend on rosin and the legal <laughs> to get some r and d. Um, and then Johnny was nice enough to work a deal with me where um we worked a rev rev share on our first wash. And this required me to find all the partners. I had to find the manufacturer. I had to find the hash maker. I had to find the cultivator. And then I had to find the distro. Um, iPoppy doesn't actually have our own licenses. Um, we're grateful for the manufacturing partners we work with and specifically my green network that really allows us to piggyback off their license. And um, it's really helped us and supported us in a way that we have not needed to go out to chase capital investment, which I think is important to being able to stay true to the mission we, and being able to stay true to craft products. Hey everyone, just jumping in real quick to give a couple shout outs to our supporters. First off, huge thanks to our Cannabis community. You can join us, search the Cannabis app on the App Store or just go to Cannabis.app in your browser and you can join our community for as little as $4.20 a month. Or if you use the code buzz at checkout, you can get in for your first month for free. We really appreciate your support. We send out seeds and all sorts of things to our supporters periodically throughout the year. Just sent out tons of packs of seeds from Neptune Farms. So if you want to be a part of that, join us over in the community and use the code buzz for a discount. Also, shout out to lostcoastplanttherapy.com. If you need a spray to take down bugs, botrytis, powdery mildew, things like that, look up Lost Coast Plant Therapy on Amazon, find it at your local grow store. This stuff is great and it's gonna help you and you can use it all the way through flower even. So you can use it in veg and in flower. So check it out, lostcoastplanttherapy.com. And of course, thanks to sacred3mushrooms.com. If you want to grow your own fungi at home, go to sacred3mushrooms.com and use the code CANNABUS for a discount. And then also, last couple shout outs, of course, go to neptuneseedbank.com and Tiki Madman. If you need to grab some Tiki Madman seeds, which these genetics are fantastic, Go to Neptune Seed Bank. You can find Tiki there. You can also go to TikiCuts.com for some clones. And then, of course, over on Neptune Seed Bank, you can also get raw genetics. We have a raw genetics interview coming up soon on the channel. So go to Neptune Seed Bank. And thanks to everyone for supporting the show. Now let's get back to the interview. We talk about that a lot on the show. We've had several guests on our show. Um, one that comes to mind is Colin from Mammoth P and there's always that fork in the road. You've built everything up to this point and you either go at your way and take all that risk and what comes, or you take on that money, that VC money. And then sometimes you just don't, you lose your company, you lose your dream. You get people who come in and fire you. They fire you from your own creation. And so I think we talk about that a lot as that kind of fork in the road. And now uh, you have made this turn where you're not going to take that on. So kind of talk about that a little bit, if you could. Um, well, I think ultimately it comes down to if you're going to take money, you just have to make sure that they're in line with your pillars, your beliefs and what you stand for. Um, so I wouldn't say we wouldn't turn down all money, but as of now, are not seeking capital investment because they're not in line with what we are trying to do. And ultimately we don't want to compromise that. And 
I think the reason why I felt confident that this can work, that this method can work is because we've done it for the past two years with success and we've been able to scale. And what we found is as a collaboration brand, although iPoppy is limited in resources, if we all come in and collectively work together and do our parts, um, again, it's it's like an all-star team, right? Everyone knows their role and, and knows what they're supposed to do. And we can make magic happen and we can stretch our resources so much further. And so, you know, like we just want Johnny and our farmers like Huckleberry Hill Farms and Matol Valley Sun Grown to really just focus on what they do best, which is the farming. It's a shame when they have to worry about dealing with chasing money and sending out like 10, 15 different emails to brands because they're not on top of the payments. And so what I decided I wanted to do was try to build an all-star team. Kind of when you look at like there's power in collaboration. So many people, if your egos and pride gets involved, you don't want to share the credit. But in my belief is that, you know, look at what artists do, music musician artists do? Why do they feature each other in their music videos so that they can share and cross collaborate on their fan base? You know, the Bryantist, who is a legend in the hash making game, um, 710 Tim, who's a legend as well, you know, working with people like that, that have such respect within the industry that are pioneers. It's, it's, they're the reason why I'm confident that we're going to pump out amazing material because I, I feel like we brought in the best people in each facet of the game. So I feel like we brought in the best farmers, the best hash makers, and the best manufacturers. But most importantly, we are all in line on the same goal, which is we're not here for the money. We're here to make a positive impact, inspire people, grow the community, and interact with people that want to experience something better. Awesome. Well, speaking of uh, experiencing something better... Oops, sorry about that. You're, I was muted on the Zoom side of things. Uh, speaking of experiencing something better, um, let's talk about the one of the things that you won first place uh, with at the Emerald Cup. So at the Emerald Cup, you won first place in the solventless concentrate ice water hash ca uh, category. And that was with uh, the collab that you did with Huckleberry Hill Farms, White the White Thorn Rose, Ice Water Hash, Six six Star Full Melt. Uh, sorry, that's a, uh, that's a, a mouthful. mouthful. Yeah, so um, I kind of wanted to, so obviously I wanted to ask you about that specific product. And then also um, I thought it would be good just real quick too, just because we've already been talking about it. Uh, just talk real quick about why the white thorn rose is something that stands out. I have some as a prop here. I Let bought I bought one of the last jars at the Emerald Cup because um, it is my favorite strain. Um, I had we had Johnny on the show talking about white thorn rose, and ju we just had an episode just about that. We did that probably like two years ago, maybe three years ago. I was I discovered it at the Emerald Cup and just fell in love with it and I just quickly started talking about it on this show and I'm growing the Paradise Pine right now in, in my backyard which I'm excited about. So anyways, you're talking to a fellow fanboy. So let's talk about um what what makes the White Thorn Rose special and then let's talk about uh you know the award winning uh full melt that you made. Um I think uh what makes the white thorn rose special first and foremost uh, is the farmers, uh, Johnny and Rose, um, the legacy that they've created. Um, and then anecdotally for me, the experience, right? I think cannabis is such a sensory profile experience. And sometimes we forget that. And, um, you know, the, the, the layers and the complexity with white thorn rose, when you first open, well, let's just start with the eyes as if we're assessing it. When you first open and look at the melt, the color instantly is different. It's got almost like this pink opaque thing going. Um, the, the resin is so clean. There's like, uh, and even when we're washing the white thorn rose, what's interesting is because of the quality of the cultivar, we get very little food grade from her. Most of it is a grade. So she dumps quite a bit of six star melt out of each wash that we do. It, it's, it's pretty phenomenal to see. Um, and then obviously the nose. One thing is I like to grade the nose and the aroma is on the complexity and on the smell, right? Uh, the enjoyment of the smell. 
but also the prominence and the intensity of aroma, I think is very important. I think some, if something smells good, but you've really got to find it and shove it up your nose. It, uh, there's an issue of something's not as loud. It may be even more so on the flower side of things. Um, so one thing about white thorn rose is she has both of that. When you crack that jar open, she's very loud, very prominent. The intensity of aroma fills up the room. When you're washing white thorn rose, that stench is just going into your clothes. When you leave, you smell white thorn rose. When I dab white thorn rose out the rig or, or out, if you're dabbing out of a Puffco, your next dabs are going to have white thorn rose remnants in it. I have ethanol cleaned my rig for three days soaked. And after I wash it, I still smell white thorn rose. Like it's like a white thorn rose cleaner went in. So that's how loud and prominent she is on the aroma. But then you look at the smell. The smell is unique. There's, it's, it's different. It's like you're getting a lot of layers and complexities, tropical notes, floral notes, um, umami funk notes, um, some, um, some earthy notes in there as well. But it's like very complex. You're getting a lot of layers and it's not one type of fruit. When you go back, you're almost catching different fruits and different scents. I really get a lot of like berries and guavas out of it. Um, sometimes you'll get some citrus and tangies, which is interesting because now, if you want to go to the scientific aspect of it, the white thorn rose tested for over 60 different terpene profiles and over 120 different cannabinoids. Many of those terpene profiles were unknown dominant terpene profiles. So one of those was selenidine. Um, pardon me if I'm saying it incorrect, but I believe beautiful. I believe and is found in a rare Costa Rican guava. So that in and of itself proves like what you're experiencing anecdotally on a scientific side. We're like, oh my gosh, this smells different. Um, example I use is um, if you never tried a mango in your life, but you've eaten all these different fruits, you'll know the mango is a fruit because it's indicative. It has all the properties. But if you've never tried a mango and you eat that, you're going to be like, whoa, what is this? Like, I've never had this flavor of fruit before. And that's the experience that a lot of people are getting when they try the white thorn rose. And that's what we realize is like, okay, that's what we built our brand with. That's the standard of what we want when people dab our products or experience it we want them to go whoa we want to sell like these holy holy moly moments right yeah and this is different moments and um you know just going back now to like the the taste and the experience now when you dab that you get all those different layers of aroma when you're dabbing it sometimes when you smell something it doesn't dab and taste the same way but man, the flavor's completely there. She's really smooth and soft on the profile. As loud as she is, it's not sharp. So it's a soft profile, so you could really just shove that up your nose. Um, and then the residue just sticks on your lips, and you really get to experience all these different layers and complexities of the white thorn rose when you're smoking. And then you go to the experience of white thorn rose, which I find for myself personally to be one of the most gratitude inducing strains ever where it just like creates so much eu eu euphoria and so much gratitude um, and happiness and that to me is something that's very very special uh, within this cultivar and you know for a lot of people they they often say they feel inspired and it, it can be like I've heard Pinsky say it was like a muse for her and if you haven't uh, checked out Jason Pinsky's review on the Buddhist I highly recommend it. And that'll give you an example of what type of inspiration the white thorn rose creates. But uh, yeah, she's just completely magical. And um, she even translates and, and she even translates into edibles really well. That's really cool. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say um, w w I would describe it. The scent kind of smells like um, strawberry oatmeal <laughs> is what I uh, describe it as. Um, but I, I love it. And I had a very similar um, interaction with it where I first discovered it at Emerald Cup, I want to say 2020, maybe it was Emerald Cup 2020. And, um, you know, I went to the Redwood Roots booth and they had, you know, their various jars for me to smell. And this was just one of the, you know, flower jars that they had. And instantly when you smell it, it smells different. And and then as JR and I have talked about on this show with Johnny and other guests as well, is it's not just smells great in the jar or in the bag or what have you. Then when you smoke it, you also get that taste. The taste comes all the way through. And that's what really 
uh, one of the things that sets it apart, um, you know, from the other strains that you're going to come across, at, at least on the flower side, but then obviously it comes through in the concentrates as well. It even, I mean, it has a really beautiful purple to it and it's cool that that comes through all the way to the concentrates as well it's just kind of has this full package yeah and totally so, so now moving forward as you know the white thorn rose has its dominance and other flavors will be coming as part of your repertoire um and that that smell and taste translation are there other flavors that you're excited about oh yeah Oh yes. Uh there there's we're working on a lot of fun uh pheno crosses with with Johnny, um, some of our other farmers as well, Dylan at Matol Valley Saint Grown. And we've got a couple different phenos over there that we're working on that we've got to figure out a name for. But if we're just looking at Johnny's farm, uh we probably have six new fun cultivars that are gonna come out. Um, obviously the white thorn rose is, is a staple. Dominant, so we're yeah. gonna keep out with that. The riddles, we're so glad that we're keeping and gonna come out with. Um, I think the riddles is kind of a sleeper in this and um was the 2022 Ego Clash winner. Um Ooh. and actually won first place at Emerald Cup for um the uh sweets category, the edible sweets category oh, cool. for the riddles uh strain specific taffy. Um so just phenomenal. The riddles of white thorn rose cross into Skittles. And then um, we actually have something that uh, already we're harvesting right now. So we're doing a sneak peek. We're going to have a fresh drop probably in the next couple of weeks. But wow. John, Johnny's already begun harvesting. Yeah, we've got an early harvester, which gives us the jump start, which is great. Uh, but we've got Paradise Rose, which is going to be, I guess I'm releasing it here. We've got Paradise Rose, which is going to be the very first 2024 Huckleberry Hill Farms cultivar that we release. And it's White Thorn Rose, cross back into the Paradise Punch. Um, really just reminds Johnny of the original Fruit Loops that he used as one of the parent plants to, to get the White Thorn Rose. And um, I had a chance, Brian just did an amazing test wash. The yield is phenomenal. I just had a chance to try it the other day and we've got another magical winner right there. That's um, so good. That's too so much. great. That uh, stokes me. That flavor. stokes me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, the, and the cool story on the Fruit Loops for folks that haven't watched our previous interviews with Johnny, the Fruit Loops is a strain that came from his mom, you know, and so... It's a strain that he's had around for, what is that, 40 years or something like that. And so it's really cool that he's kind of like dipping back into these historic genetics that his family has created. You know, these are not just um, some strains that he picked up. These are real legacy genetics that he's been um, cultivating there up in Humboldt for for decades. Um so let's talk about the edibles real quick, too, before we let you go, because uh, we're going to try to jam in a, a, a few more questions before we uh, wrap up. But um, let's talk oh. about the edibles. That's really interesting. So you did um, gummies were the category that you won in as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because um, that's just such an interesting... It's, we were actually just talking about this in another episode. It's really cool that the Emerald Cup has all these different categories. And so you guys um, were in the gummies. Let's let's talk about it. Yeah, thank you. Um, honestly, I got to give that credit to My Green Network and, and Six Star over at our manufacturing facilities, our partners. And um, they've got a team of just like award-winning culinary chefs that ended up jumping into the cannabis space over here. And so... They've been making award-winning products for a while. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Wheat Confections, but they were actually the ones that um, collaborated on the Riddles Taffy. But they also did the Gourmet Chocolates that won at the Emerald Cup the year before. Um, so they just have like these amazing chefs out there. They have a full kitchen, which most manufacturing facilities don't have, which is also why we're able to... I think pump out a good rosin quality because we have an outlet for our food grade and we don't have to mix microns or lower tier. Um, and so ultimately I thought we were going to get into carts before edibles, but then we found them, we found this kitchen and they were like, no, it's actually really easy to do. I tried a strain specific gummy from them 
And that's what ultimately convinced me because I was like, look, the white thorn rose is so special. I don't think we need to add any flavor to this. I don't want to taint her. It's like if you have this like amazing A5 Kobe, sorry if you're vegan, A5 Kobe or something, and you just douse it with A1 sauce. Like it's, it's unnecessary. And so um, ultimately, we felt like they had the capability to truly put out the best translation and representation of the white thorn rose in a gummy form. So we made it strain specific taste and experience. There's no flavor added to it whatsoever. There's no color added to it whatsoever. The only flavor in there is from the white thorn rose rosin. So we don't even make non-medicated samples because it's literally from the rosin that's flavored. And what a lot of people say is when you eat the gummy, it literally tastes like you ate the dab. Like when you dab it out and taste your lips, it feels like you got to taste that dab. And it breaks when you let it. I kind of like to let the gummy sit in my mouth a little bit because when you let it break down, you really get to experience the different layers of it. And um, interestingly, too, I think it preserves some of the hash qualities of the white thorn rose as well. And I think what's special about the white thorn rose and these gummies is and and we kind of hit on it. The aroma is not typical to where. Like some people say it doesn't smell so weedy, you know what I mean? So like what ends up happening is we get a lot of people that don't consume cannabis that are like, oh, what's that smell? They're like, it's weed, it's white thorn rose. And like, what? I didn't know that weed could smell like this. That's crazy. And, you know, we give hash heads the gummies and we give people that don't really consume the gummies and they all are just in awe and say the same thing. What flavors in it though? No, no, no. But what did you flavor? Like, no, but what flavors? The flavor is white thorn rose that's it. That's the magic. And I think when you see this, it's like, imagine how many flavors and combinations of flavors of good dishes we're missing out on, on the culinary world by not including terpenes. It's like, we're ignoring a whole side of plant recipes and, and, and plant ingredients. Yeah. That's there's wonderful. like, there's, so, I, I don't even remember. I think it was over 600 combinations of terpene profiles that can be made from the cannabis plant itself. And that number, you hear different fluctuations of that number back and forth, but it's amazing what, uh, you know, I uh, I always thought it would be great if Johnny could come out with some O'Day White Thorn Rose. You could just like, (laughs) before you went out on the club, you know, all the ladies would be like, hello, ladies. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, that that White Thorn, we've talked about it too. We want to make her into a fragrance. I mean, my mission is to get White Thorn Rose out to the world, make it a household strain name and not just a household strain name, but maybe one day a household aroma. That's really cool. That's, that's um, I you know, as we, it's, I'm glad that we had got to have this conversation because um, kind of backstory is I saw you winning all these awards and I was like, dude, I got to get this guy on the, on the podcast. And then I saw, um, obviously that you're friends with Johnny and stuff and you know, that you're also a big fanboy of the white thorn rose and I am as well. Um, so it's, um, but I'm glad that we got to connect cause I, I got to better appreciate your story and it, it sounds like kind of feeding back to you what I'm hearing is you're kind of this matchmaker. You're bringing in the best of all these different, um, you know, their various realms, their various parts of the industry. You're bringing them on all together under, you know, through your brand and putting that out into the world. And I think that's really cool. It's, it's giving people an idea of how they can contribute to the industry. Cause I think a lot of us um, that like cannabis, we often think, well, how could we contribute or how could we, you know, be a part of this? And I think it's really cool that the way that you found that your niche and the way that you can uh, be a part of it is bringing together the right people to make the right products. It's really, it's really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. You hit it on the nail. And I, I think that's what makes the experience so enjoyable is, is being able to build these relationships that matter. And um, more important to me than than working with the White Thorn Rose is to be able to say that I've, I've been able to build a friendship with Johnny and Rose over there. It definitely means a lot. That's awesome. Well, um, before we go, uh, are there any sort of shout outs or things that you want folks to check out? Um, p- places that people could go to learn more about you and your brand, things like that? Yeah, definitely go to our Instagram, iPoppyCo. Um, also, uh, Keep an eye out for Canifest. Oh, cool. Uh, 
I know that's around the corner. We did enter. We're hoping for another win. So we'll see there. Um, and we've got a hash class that we're planning, a master hash class with the Bryantist and uh, 710 Tim and Migraine Network that we're going to do at our facility. That's going to be in October. So keep an eye out for that because we really want to make that a hands-on experience. And we actually want to give people the opportunity to wash and press white thorn rows and uh, get, get your own sample over there. And Actually, I'm considering that this will be the batch we enter into competition. So if, if we get another win there, it would be cool. And like another driving force for community of all of us coming together can kind of put our hand in this winning skew. That's really cool. Well, I I have I feel like I have a keeper Fino of the Paradise Pine. I've got this really, okay. uh, really nice purple one. I posted it on our YouTube channel yesterday um, that it reminds me a bit of white thorn rose but this one smells like grape candy if that's what it says like you know that kind of artificially <laughs> grape candy kind of taste or smell that's what it tastes or smells like um but uh yeah i've got a couple different phenos of it um that i'm really excited about i'll maybe i'll send you some pictures when it's a l- couple more weeks into yes. flower yes yeah. please i yeah. love that yeah well so cool Um, This has been really fun, Justin. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day on this Friday afternoon um, to, you know, do a quick call from some guys that you'd never (laughs) heard of before. (laughs) And um, uh, this is a fun conversation. I hope folks check you guys out. I know we're definitely you're on our radar, so we're going to be keeping an eye on you. And, um, you know, we'll definitely be at next year's Emerald Cup. So we're going to be looking for you and uh, maybe we'll get to speak to you then. Um, but if not, I, we had a really great time talking to you today. I had such an amazing time. Thank you guys so much. And um, I have a lot of admiration for for what you guys are doing. And it's really important that you guys are a voice for our farmers. And, you know, I think we can all selfishly say we're in love with these genetics and, and we can't have them go away. So thank you for the good work that you guys are both doing. Thank awesome, you. I man. appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Well, Justin, thanks for your time. JR, thanks for hanging out with me on this Friday. We did a couple of interviews today. It was a nice uh, Friday into the week for us. Um, and as always, JR, Rose love. love. Peace, everyone.